Good day viewers, welcome back to yet another fun-filled and exciting episode of your favorite panel discussion show that is of course The Social League. I am Hansha Kapofi and I will be the moderator for today's discussion. Now before we dive into today's discussion, um, let's take a quick trip to the marketplace. Now, last week we had an amazing discussion about moving into the digital world where we were joined by CJ Dumeni, um, the CEO and co founder of Chomi Bytes, as well as the CEO and co founder of Taxi Connect, Reynold uh, Shiwagala. Um, here's what went down in last week's discussion. Um, so, Taxi Connect, man, um, it was really inspired by safety and convenience mm. when it comes to the taxi um, industry so those are the key uh, factors that really inspired me um, in starting taxi connect mm. and um, yeah that's what i ran with man mm. oh. well um, chomi chomi started as a purely as an e-commerce company mm. um we we think that e-commerce is the future mm. and yes. we, we believe that it can transform the maybe especially mm. so we started off with a food delivery app um, mm. as that people know as Chummy Bites and yeah. recently they were moving into more and more things. Yeah, but that, the inspiration was basically to create an e-commerce industry for, for Namibians and mm. that they can take part in, yeah. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Massive, because especially in countries like Namibia where we lack resources mm. yeah, and uh, we lack infrastructure, that's exactly what technology is, was created for. Yeah. In order to step in the gaps between um, between where there's no resources and there's no um, infrastructure and so mm. on. So in countries like Namibia, we can really, really benefit from mm. from, from digital platforms. Um, it gives us scale, um, yeah. gives us affordability. Um. It's important for every business to kind of digitalize because mm. with this, you are able to really um, cut out the errors that humans make. Um, a lot of things that require a lot of time, a lot of red tape, yeah. Yeah. people filling in forms, people doing whatever, and you're dealing with paperwork <coughs> and paperwork. Not only is it good for the environment. I think, um, let me just, like, firstly, um, I think the gig community is something that's going to be huge. Massive. Mm. Um, he, especially here in Namibia, and I, I feel like the opportunity is quite huge. Mm. Yeah. Um, direct impact of, of dig digitalization is obviously reduced cost. Yeah. Um, also scalability. I think scalability is mm. the big thing. Operational cost is mm. a huge thing. Mm. And like I said before, especially for a startup where you yeah. don't really have that capital. Um, so if your systems and your operations are automated, it kind of gets you to that place faster. Mm. And um, yeah. I mean, Some of the challenges definitely includes just users' adoption rates in the sense of mm. building trust with, with customers. Yeah. Uh, now today's topic is financial breakdown. And I know a lot of you are really, really wondering how do I handle my finances better? Because it just seems like I get money and all of a sudden, two hours later, it has already disappeared. Now I have the m most amazing panel with me in studio today. I am joined by a financial advisor from Old Mitchell as well as a legal practitioner. Good day, how are you doing? Could you please introduce yourselves for our viewers? Uh, good day, my name is Ndaham Belela Haifene. I'm a candidate legal practitioner. I'm also a speaker, aspiring author, and I love everything that has to do with finances, savings, investment, all that. Yes. Good day, my name is Randy Kanime. I'm a credit financial advisor from Old Mutual Namibia. So we handle all your financial aspects from here to the near future as well. Yes. All right, so um, let's start from the, from the core. What is a financial breakdown? Well, I have to go first. Okay, <laughs> so I think I'll put it in lay terms. For me, my understanding of financial breakdown is really just being able to categorize my finances mm. so that it assists me in planning and budgeting and seeing which areas I need to pour my inf uh, my finances in and really just get trying to get around managing my finances in a healthy way. Mm. Yes. So to my understanding of a financial breakdown, it's more to say, let's put it in an accounting aspect mm. so you as a business or as a company has books that you have to like balance each and every month or each and every year yes so as soon as there is like any deficit or indefinite amount that shouldn't be there or a loss that you've made mm. that is actually like a kind of financial breakdown mm. which means that 
your, your finances didn't actually run smooth as possible or smooth as usual, mm. to say. Yes. All right. So what is the importance of having this financial breakdown um, for our youth especially? Um, I would say that financial literacy and financial discipline mm. is very important, especially when it comes to the youth. Yes. So youth nowadays don't actually know what the value of money is. Mm. So as soon as they get a certain amount today, they want to spend it today. Yes. So as soon as they understand the breakdown of where it's coming from, where it needs to go, and for what it needs to go for, then they'll actually have a more understanding and better saving aspects at the end of the day. Yes. I think that is true, of course, because it helps you know and actually track your spending. Mm. And when you do not have that, then it's a bit difficult for you to plan properly for your next spending and how I'm going to utilize my money in mm. the next period, let me say six months or one year. Yes. So really, it really helps with you being able to plan properly and being able to identify the areas in which you need to improve on as a youth. Yes. And I also agree with him. Uh, us as the youth nowadays, we really just get money and spend it. We don't yes. even look at, do I need a retirement annuity? Do I need, mm. you know, uh, maybe an emergency fund? Most of the youth don't even know what an emergency it fund is. Exactly. is. And really, all that financial literacy, I, I do agree with him. It's quite mm. very crucial for each and every Namibian youth. Yes. Um, yes, I think the both of you touched on financial literacy, which is something that is very important and the youth today really, really lack. Um, so how do you then think um, we can um, have a mo more financially literate youth? How can we start with that conversation of having uh, youth starting to break down their finances, um, etc.? cetera? Um, so, you know, that, that is something that actually draws down from how you were raised at the end of the day. Mm. So doing it now would be like a plus. Yeah. Um, but getting the understanding of that specific person's background first before actually advising them on how to start saving. Yes. So as soon as the parents or let's say, for example, the government, the parents basically mm. like have or create like understanding and like a usual um, discussion, maybe daily, yes. like, please do this, save this amount of money. Mm. Let's see how big it accumulates to. In the, in the next future or in yeah. the next 12 months to say because mm. as soon as the background or the backbone our parents don't actually raise us in that specific like way yes then we won't be able to use the knowledge today to like say let me start saving yeah until you get like to an elder elder um, age then only you would start like saying okay i need to like start putting start money away for yeah. emergencies mm. yes i do definitely agree however i think it's also something that as a young person, you must be a responsible young person. Mm. You must be disciplined enough. My mother didn't really teach me about investments, but I have invested. I have investments. Mm. Why? Mm. Because I found it very important and very crucial for me to be able to understand my finances. So mm. that one day, even if I'm a business person, I don't leave everything to the accountant. I want to understand how are you running my things. So I also feel like us as the youth, there's a part of us that needs to be very responsible. Mm. We live in a world that is so much digitalized mm. everything is on the internet yes. everything Literally. on investments on saving on mm. budgeting it's on youtube but we go there and download our music but you don't you won't download maybe like D dave ramsey's book to read about what is debt free how mm. do i go about it mm. can i leave that when all that so i feel like part of us is the, as young people honestly need to take up the stand and be responsible mm. instead of because you'll find people that are saying no because i wasn't taught i don't know mm -hmm. but yeah. you know that you don't actually know and you need to know how to handle it yes, yes. so you need to like start putting in the extra mile to like start getting the information in yeah in yeah i think it's very important especially when um uh, per from childhood i think a lot starts from childhood and um, the way you are raised ha plays a very important role with the person that you're going to become and sometimes along the way you do also need to as an individual now start picking up and learning for yourself yes. if that's something that i'm picking up from the conversation that we're having today yes um such a lovely conversation that we're having here in studio we'll be right back after this short break
welcome back and if you're just joining us you are watching the social league i am of course joined by an a uh, financial advisor from Old Mutual as well as a candidate legal practitioner and today in studio we are discussing financial breakdown. Now before the break we're talking a little bit about investments, what um, the, the, the youth need to start investing a little bit more and sometimes um, when it comes to financial literacy these are things that you need to learn along the way if you are not really taught about it at a very young age. So I wanted to find out from you guys what do you think the youth can start um, investing in right now at a very early age um, let's say a 13 year old feels like okay now I think I want to learn a little I want to start investing what is that those few what are those few things that we can start investing in right now um you know something that's not too severe um mm. so as a child's at that age you can always like tell them okay let's save up for your next birthday party or let's save up for your mm. next gift that you would want for your birthday or let's save up for the shoes that you saw in the in the store the other day yeah so starting off like a, with a small amount like for example mm. we have a product called that we call the unit trust product yeah at old mutual so you can actually save from a minimum of hundred dollars per month that we call pocket money mm -hmm. nowadays in, in in a parent home yeah you can actually use that hundred dollars to just put it away each and every month because as soon as you start sowing or planting your seeds now mm. you can actually start eating the, the fruits after five to ten years yeah so it's always just like the small things that, that you can actually like just start to get the child into that mm. space of you know like saving and feeling comfortable and then as soon as they really do want something then they can use that money yeah yes. No, I, I do agree with him. Of course, starting from an early age, I think especially as young as 13, the mm. parents also need to be involved so that they teach their kids the importance of saving and yes. just start with a small thing mm. or create an account for their child or have a piggyback for a child so that mm. they understand that every time I get money, you tell them every time you get money, put something inside that plants a seed in that person mm. as they grow up. Yeah, yes. um, I think that I love the, the way the two of you have put it. I think telling a child something like, you know what, let's save up for your birthday party. That, that is a way of actually instilling it into them. Yes. Um, um, and so many youth nowadays, let's, let's touch a little bit on this conversation of investing into maybe Forex, for example, which the youth are so drawn to. I mean, a lot of people are doing it and now the, all the, the youth are, are sort of like so into it and they want to... Um, get to a place where they are investing into forex what are your views on that personally from my side um mm. to say it bluntly and put it out there forex is something that is i won't i, I don't want to call it stereotype mm. it is the truth it actually does happen yeah. um there's actually very good traders out there that actually do a very good job um but we only see like a certain point yeah of it so we don't actually see what's behind the doors or behind all the Instagram posts of all these millionaires, etc. Yeah. Et so you need to start at a point whereby you need to start investing yourself mm -hmm. a certain amount with a specific Forex trader. Mm. So like the banks currently also, they're also Forex traders. They also actually trade or then invest funds or our funds mm. into the market. Yeah. And the, at this kind of moment, the market is actually very volatile. So you're taking risk for, for putting in an investment. Mm. That is something that you need to like understand from the get go. As soon as you understand how investments work and the risk of losing your money, then only you can start investing at the end of the day. Because mm. it's not always to say like, as soon as you invest, you're gonna get a good return. Yeah. Yeah, you might not get a good return. So, mm. but that shouldn't like um, push you back and then say, mm. okay, no, I don't wanna do it anymore. Yeah. So just keep on going until you, you, you hit your mark. Mm, yes, I do agree with him. I think for me, that my only worry, especially with young people, is us flocking into things that we don't really research about. Yeah. I feel like if you don't have enough knowledge, if you haven't done enough research, then I would say don't risk your money like that. They mm. say, you know, if you don't risk money, money that is not a risk doesn't make money. However, the risk needs to be calculated. Yeah. The risk need, need to be researched. You c I can't just wake up. I have no understanding on Forex today. And unfortunately, I will say it. I'm not going to invest in forex as we speak mm. however i have an understanding on easy equities mm. Mm. will i invest in that yes i would because i have an understanding i have mm. learned i have seen information i've read up on how it operates and how i can go about it mm. and i know the risk involved but with forex unfortunately i don't so all i can say is if you are deciding to invest in forex make sure that you have done enough research so that when you lose your money, you don't grieve over money because you were never prepared on losing it in the mm. first place. 
Mm. Yes. Oh, I love how you guys have put it for us. I mean, if you've not done research in this market that you want to approach or this place that you want to go to, then it's advice that you don't at all try it. Um, so what do you think that the, do you think that the Namibian government is doing enough when it comes to having a much more financially literate youth or do you think that there's still room for improvement? Personally, I think there's room for Im improvement. I know mm. we have something called the Financial Literacy Institute, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. 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 Mm. They give out information about finances. But I'm very concerned when most of these initiatives that come about are focused in p at places where people are already aware of this information. Yes. I haven't seen them. I'm from a very small village in the northern part of Namibia, and I will say it now, I haven't seen them in my village. Mm. Mm. I haven't seen them at schools where, you know, in those deep villages to start uh, talking to those children about investments mm. and money and budgeting and finances. So I think the government can still do quite um, a better job, honestly, mm. by integrating all these mechanisms that we talk about, not only here uh, in places where we are already away and we are very much like we receive everything. So mm. We are uh, basically at the receiving end of everything that comes with social media. Everything. Right now when I'm in Windhoek, I don't really like anything. Yeah. I have Wi-Fi. I can go on YouTube and search for all these things. But mm. a child deep there, you know, the Congo, yeah. doesn't have this information. Mm. And they don't even have the internet to start with. The mm. radio doesn't even work well. Yeah. So I feel like if we can make it a point to make sure that each and every person within society has access to information when it comes to financial literacy, I think mm. we'll get somewhere or even integrate it into our I education system. Mm. School doesn't teach you how to handle finances, yes. but you are going to balance a cash book. You mm. don't even know the necessity of that. Mm. And so we really need to... I don't know how integrated in our education system, go out there and create awareness and just teach society how to handle money and everything, finances. Yeah. Yeah, just to add, add to what she said is actually, you know, I'm spot on. I would say as soon as it comes from the government, mm. government needs to like incorporate and make it compulsory from the education side, yeah. number one. So we have math in, in, in schools, in schools. Yeah. we have accounting in schools. Mm. But we do not actually understand how the money structure works yeah. in schools. Do you understand? Ooh. So starting it there, um, people that don't have social media, they don't have cell phones, they don't mm. have like radios, as she said, they can actually start from education. Yeah. For those that are actually, uh, we're in Namibia right now. Yeah. So not everybody around Namibia or in Namibia has like, you know, like access to schools or anything. Yeah. But as soon as they do have it, then they can already start from there. Because as the, the kids are growing, or as the elders were growing, we need to, I, we will actually be able to like understand it much more better and mm. use it much more better. Yeah. Do you understand? So then we can actually like see that at a young age, as soon as I get pocket money, let me put an amount away mm. before spending it. Yeah. So that is my motto that I always use. First save before spending. Mm. And as soon as I start spending, I need to spend on things that I need and not actually want. Yeah. So now, nowadays we're like very tendent to like, you know, I saw a friend of mine having that. I want that as well. Yeah. Then you actually, you're living above your fireplace at the end of the day. Mm. So you're spending money that you could have used for something more important. Mm. But now you only, you just want that polo shirt right now, for example. Yeah. Whereby you could have like saved up for it. And then, and then you could have like acquired yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. I love, yo, yo, yo. I wish I could just sit down with you guys all day and have this amazing, amazing discussion. Um, so earlier you guys were giving up a, uh, a few, I, I regard them as tips. Um, for parents um, when Randy said that it's great if a parent could be like you know what you, you want a you want a birthday party for your 16th okay. so let's start saving now and all that so what are the those tips that you have for a 18 year old let me say an 18 year old 19 year old watching this that has no, no information on trying to save up and all that they just know that they have to save but they don't know how to start Yo. Yeah. I think <laughs> I would, <laughs> we'll, we'll go back to the same thing. I keep on going back to the yeah. same thing. Number one, do research. Mm. Because if you tell someone to invest or save with lack of understanding, it doesn't help. Mm. Don't understand what is going on. Number two, I think, and it is like old mutual, Sandlam, they do this, I don't know if you could find financials, mm. yeah. one-on-ones for free. 
conduct them, they'll be able to tell you these are the packages we have, this is what you can do, this is where you can invest your money and all that. Number three, I think live within your means. Yes. Mm. Live within your means doesn't mean live from paycheck to paycheck or live from pocket money to pocket money. It means you being able to actually save a certain amount of your whatever it is that you get monthly. Mm. Maybe you have a part-time job. Save money from that. Maybe you get pocket money. Save money f from, from that. If you don't have a bank account, or mm. if you have a bank account, if it's FNB, maybe do a 32-day uh, investment. Mm. Start from there, but start from somewhere. But keep money for emergency sakes because you don't know that your parents are always going to be around. Mm. I started saving at quite an early age because I had to step up to mm. the occasion. Unfortunately, that is just how I was raised. Mm. I needed to handle things. I got a job. As soon as I came to Windhoek, I got a part-time job, but I knew I had to save money mm. for that. So I think also be very realistic also. Budget, budget, budget. And if you need to save money for three months to afford a polo shirt, do it. Mm. Yeah. If that means one month because you want a trouser, you will have to lay by it while your whole squad gets their trousers at that moment, do it. Yes. And understand why you are doing it. You are doing it for you mm. and not for other people. So really, I think that is all I can say. Mm. Um, the one tip that I would give the young youth um, coming up, growing up, is, is, is you know, the mindset. Mm. See who you actually, like, associate yourself with. Yeah. See where those friends actually do come from mm. see what they say listen to what they say and then you would actually be more like vigilant to say do i belong here mm. do i not belong here mm. that's where you can make that as soon as you can get that level then you'll be able to start seeing okay listen i don't need that i need this yeah i don't want to do that i want to do this mm. you understand so lowering your expectations as well actually would at, at, at the end of the day it would actually make you more happier yeah so you would have more time to like think of what i need what i need to do hmm. so young young guys need to like start like seeing that the, the life that we're living today is is is, is actually very very scary because hmm. two years ago the COVID pandemic started yeah a lot of people lost jobs now the big question comes in did those people save up yeah did they save money did they have money for that type of emergency if you understand mm. so as i said earlier as soon as you start planting your seeds at a very young age or very, like early 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 in the years mm. then you can actually start seeing how your money actually does return mm. that's why as you said also sunlam old mutual we're there for you mm. you understand if you have to like start saving much more stricter there's the max commit investment that we actually have mm. so which means that you need to commit from your side from your side to us to say listen I want to save up for five years at least. Mm. I want to see the returns after five years. So we don't allow you to actually touch that money within those five years yeah. until your, 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 your end year starts, right? mm. C comes, up, comes about. Then you'll be able to see, okay, listen, this is the amount that I started saving with. This is the amount that I have now. Mm. You understand? So they need to start the mindset now. The yeah, mindset. I think also read. Read mm. books on finances. The one person, the one book I can recommend or the one author I can recommend, uh, it's Dave Ramsey. Yes. Mm. Please read. Dave, uh, Dave Ramsey, he brings this concept of being debt free. Mm. And I know I'm not there yet because, you know, I still have a student loan to pay off mm. for my studies I just completed. But I think aspiring also for me to be that person that doesn't live in debt mm. and realizing when really must I get into debt and why? Mm. And all, but read. Rich dead, poor dead. I think one of the things I have learned is to see my assets and liabilities in a different way. Very mm. good book, very good book. Yeah, very good book. So read, get books out there. Now people have iPhones, most Gen Zs, or I don't know, <laughs> that generation has <laughs> iPhones. <laughs> Go on podcasts, look for the people, and just educate yourself, really. Mm. Yes. yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, I for one learned a lot. I learned a lot just sitting here, you know. I just want to already run to Old Mutual and be like, you know what? This is the investment I want to start already. Please do. Don't even hesitate. <laughs> Don't even hesitate. Yes, yes, I'll do so.
Right. Um, today's discussion was all things financial breakdown. If there's one thing that I took away from today's discussion is that you need to do research before you actually commit to anything. And, you know, it's very important to start at an early age and decide, you know what, let me start putting away. And the journey is personal. Don't do things because your friends are doing it, but do it because it's for you and not for the people around you. Yeah. So until next week from us here at the Social League, it is, of course, goodbye.